Hey guys, welcome to a new makeup releases video. I did not get to do one last week. I feel like I've missed two weeks in doing these videos, but I wanted to pick it back up. I like doing these videos. I have a fun time. It's basically just me kind of sitting down, talking about all the new releases, telling you guys what I'm interested in picking up, what I'm not interested in, and we do sit and we talk a little bit of absolute nonsense about some of these releases when applicable. So without further ado, you guys, let's get into it. Let's hop on over to Trend Mood One's page on Instagram, and I'm gonna pretty much pick up from where I left off. Some of these have already been released, but I do wanna talk about them. Um, so I'm gonna talk about this. This, I don't even know if it's out yet. This is the More Liquid Blushes. It's the Sun Kisser Blush from Maybelline. Looks like it's coming in six different shades. It's supposed to be an easy to use liquid blush that provides a natural sun-kissed glow. It blends seamlessly with all skin tones and leaves skin feeling breathable and moisturized. It just is coming soon on their website and retailers. I'm not actually sure this is even launched yet, even though this post is from March 5th. So a while ago, but I haven't seen these come out on Ulta. I haven't seen these in the drugstore yet. I don't know if this is launched on their website. So that's why I did want to talk about it. So I want to read some of the comments. Someone says, LOL, they wrong for using the same packaging as the gloss. Someone else said, good concept, new packaging needed. Someone else said, so we're going to get liquid blushed to death. I mean, I can't disagree that there aren't a ton of blush launches still dropping in 2024. We were totally inundated in 2023. I don't know if I have yet grown <laughs> tired of it. So <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely down to try these. That's basically all I have to say. I want to say that the people in the comments talking about the darker skin tones, like they basically look like shimmery highlighter. They do not look like blushes, except maybe one shade in City Sizzle looks like maybe a blush shade on a darker skin tone. So these are mostly like radiant, and even some of them are really interesting shades too. Like some are coppery that could be like shimmery highlighters or even bronzers. So I don't know, I'm still down to try it. It doesn't say how much they're gonna cost, but I imagine they're gonna be in like the, I don't know. 10.99, 16.99 range, somewhere in there. And then Guerlain launched their spring collection 2024. It looks like Meteorites 2, 1, 2, 3, and 4, the Kabuki brush, an Ombre's quad, and a Kiss Kiss Bee Glow in a new pink color. So it's one of their lippies. I just am never tempted to get anything from Guerlain. I've never tried their eyeshadow formula. I think maybe I've been tempted to pick up some of their lip products, but really nothing else. They're kind of high priced and without like a real color story drawing me in, I just can't see myself testing their eyeshadow formula for the price point. Um, I do want to mention that I'm going to try my best to link everything that I'm talking about in the description box. I haven't done that yet, so I don't really know what that entails. And also everything that I'm wearing on my face today, I will be linking in the description box in case you're curious because I did have uh, at least one person ask me about it. Uh, let's move on. So we've got stuff from Kiko Milano, which I quite enjoy. I love a lot of their releases. They have their spring collection, Days in Bloom, coming out. They always drop a ton of stuff. I mean, there's never a shortage of things. And they're all like pretty decently priced. It comes with an eyeshadow palette, a face palette, a cleanser and a makeup remover, lipstick and pencil. It comes in a satin finish with six shades, uh, three in one silky all over. It's a liquid formula with a natural radiant finish in four shades a brow pen, a highlighter, a brush set, an all-over concealer. Oh my gosh, it goes on and on. You guys will see the picture. So there's a ton of stuff here. These are great spring color stories too. And by the way, their formulas are fantastic. There's almost nothing from Kiko Milano that I don't like. Um, maybe their concealer. There was just one concealer that I tested from one collection that was super duper light and I didn't like that. It looks like there's one of those puff liquid blushes, which looks really good. Their eyeshadow formula is also really good. They even dropped like a mascara. Their powder formula is fantastic and their lip products are the best, you guys. They come up with the shiniest, most beautiful lip products. So I don't know when this is coming out. Oh, this does say available now. I actually might go to their site and like pick up a couple of things from this collection because it is so freaking cute. Wow, there's a lot of comments on this. Like we need to go read the comments. Someone says this looks so pretty, but when did Kiko become so pricey? I don't I don't think this is pricey. The stuff is in like the 16 to $25 range. And I feel like that's normal for them. I mean, at least as long as I've been trying them. 
Someone else says, at first glance, I thought this was Chantecaille. And someone says, only Kiko product I've ever purchased is the contour stick and I love it so much. Someone else says, Kiko coming in hot with the pretty packaging. Wow, what a beautiful collection. Where do I find this? It says sold out on the website. So a lot of people are saying they like the packaging on this. So many more comments than I thought Kiko Milano Post would get. I just don't hear a lot of people talking about this brand. And I've done dedicated videos on my channel about it because I think they have some really amazing things, especially their lip products, you guys. They're affordable. Like Tom Ford makes the same sparkly ass lip products that Kiko does. And Kiko sells them for like $26, not 90. When Tom Ford stuff is selling out, you could just go to Kiko's website and they basically have a sparkly lip balm or sparkly lipstick with a ton of pigment that's really long lasting and super creamy for 26 bucks still available. And they almost always carry a shiny sparkly lip gloss, lip balm or pigmented lipstick on their site pretty much at all times. All right, let's move on. New NARS with Love collection. Why the hell does this look like every other freaking thing they've ever dropped? Looks like the Laguna Ultimate Face Palette, Eyeshadow Quad, Reflecting Setting Powder, Reflecting Blush, Cushion Foundation, Power Matte Lipsticks, and Total Seduction Eyeshadow Sticks with a Matte Finish, coming soon. I don't think I've seen this drop on Sephora's site. I have one of their face palettes and that's, I just feel like it, they all look the damn same. So how could I possibly buy another? This powder is literally released every single time they come with a collection, they just change the packaging. What's the point? What's the purpose? Are there a bunch of people out there still buying limited edition NARS packaging for the same exact products and the same exact shades? <laughs> Not me. Okay, let's move on. It looks like Kitsch B. T21 and Kitsch is coming out with like pillowcases and then, oh, and Wonder Woman Kitsch. More pillowcases and clips and scrunchies coming soon. Oh, it's coming to Ulta. All right, I don't know what BT21 is. I've definitely limited the collabs that I've featured on my channel because I'm just not into collabs that much. I don't know what the hell this is. And to me, like personally, I've talked about this, you guys, but I think collabs are, they need to be few and far between when it comes to marketing kid shit to adults. And I might be out here just talking up a crazy storm or whatever, and people may love this, but no, no, not for me. Oh, here we go. Someone said all these launches and collabs are so childish. The target audience must be children. <laughs> Someone else said the B21 is K-pop, specifically BTS, so people of all ages love them. Someone else said, you are so miserable, says the single dad. And, so, and they replied, I'm a 20 year old woman. <laughs> Someone else said, my BTS obsessed self did not need to, be, to see these today. Someone else said, I wanna see Care Bears. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you guys. I know that there's probably a lot of adults that really like this stuff and i know k-pop has a really strong audience it's just i can't the nyx is coming out with and they have been spotted in stores at ulta the mega size butter gloss keychain and a new sparkly finish so they're coming out with sparkly lip glosses called the butter gloss bling in shades i don't know four shades four or five shades it looks like so they're just sparkly glosses i don't know you guys these are good glosses to begin with plus i'm really into like sparkly lips at the current moment i'm currently wearing one so it might be something that i pick up a shade or two not gonna lie and then elf is dropping new shades in there primer infused matte blushes and primer infused matte bronzers retailing for seven dollars looks like they've already launched so they're probably on ulta's website it's four new shades in each this is not a product that a lot of people talk about one thing comes to mind when i see shade extensions is definitely like oh they're trying to like pick up traction for this particular product again i think i have one blush in like my reference library just so that i could talk about it um, if I did like a full face of elf or something along those lines, but this blush is just kind of like the middle of the road for me. It's a good, decent matte blush for $7, but I'm not interested in getting any other shades. However, I can say never stop giving us expansions to shade ranges if you can, because there is an audience out there. There's a ton of different skin tones and undertones. 
So keep on keeping on with that. I did see this launch already. This was at Sephora. It's the new lip product from Tatcha. It's called the Day and Night Lip Duo in Midnight Lily. So it looks like it is a lip mask, which is a leave on jelly treatment of squalene and Japanese peach that restores lips and then the Kiss Lip Tint with an SPF 25. It did release on March 13th on their website and it came onto Sephora at some point. This looks really good. And I actually thought about getting not the lip mask itself, but the uh, lip tint with SPF because that's kind of nice. I did get sunburned uh, two weeks ago and I did talk about that and I'm peeling like crazy but my lips even got a little bit chapped because I wasn't wearing anything on it. So it made me kind of think oh maybe I should get this for the SPF. There are more affordable things on the market but it looked pretty good. So joining the Chocolate Soleil family is the bronzing and sculpting stick from Too Faced. I'm pretty sure this is already released. So this is coming with chocolate mousse, chocolate souffle, chocolate caramel, and chocolate lava. So I thought about getting the stick bronzer and then I looked at the swatches and they just look too warm toned for what I'm reaching for right now. And I was like, ooh, that's it. That's the thing that's not going to make me get it. I'm just not looking for warm tones. And I have so many bronzer sticks in my collection right now that are just getting ignored. So I'm not going to pick this up. And then Rare Beauty is dropping two new shades to the Positive Light Silky Touch Highlighter. They are both for darker complexions in deep bronze and warm copper. So reflect and reveal respectively. I think these are already available on Sephora's website and her website and good. I told you guys, shade ranges, fabulous, fabulous. Keep bringing them. And then Armani is coming out with a new gloss. This is already available, I think like two days ago um, as I'm filming this on Sephora's website. It is a, what do they call this? Prisma Glass Oil in Gel Lip Gloss. It coats lips in a maximal shine and hydration in one swipe to enhance and smooth lips while delivering a sheer wash of dimensional color. Ooh, it looks juicy. I'm a huge fan of Armani, just not the lip products. I haven't had a great ton of luck with their lip products. I think primarily because I've tried matte formulas from them. I do not like the matte formula from Armani. And I feel like they get a lot of traction, but I don't understand why. They are so drying and they emphasize my lip lines like crazy. So that's a no, but these actually might be a yes. I think I actually have a shade in my cart. <laughs> Someone said, ladies, please pull yourselves together. This is a dream, a world with an unlimited gloss. Are you forgetting? We are just girls. I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Someone else says, what brand is this? They look nice. Someone said, nice, but now it's getting boring. Can we get anything other than lip oils and lip glosses? And then someone else said, these look nice, but enough of the lip oils. Yeah, okay. Someone else is enjoying it. Yeah, clean girl makeup is here in 2024. Glossy lips, liquid blush, colored mascara, love it, love it. Didn't we have clean girl makeup last year? Is that not over? My idea of clean girl makeup is no makeup. Like, what? What is the point? What is the fun of that? Unless you have like absolutely perfect skin and perfect eyes. I don't know. I'm not into the clean girl, whatever, whatever. So let's move on from that comment. <laughs> and it looks like Jones Road has already put out two new shades. Again, an extension to the shade range for the Miracle Balm. One looks like it is a more mauve shade, which is in Pinch Cheeks. Oh, a medium rosy pink with subtle multi-dimensional shimmer. It's meant for fair to dark skin tones. And the other one is Cocoa Bronze. It is meant for medium to deep skin tones. If you like the Miracle Balm, these look like great shades, but not, no, not for me. And then Laura Mercier has already released this. It is an ultra blur, talc-free, waterproof, translucent, pressed setting powder. The thing that I like about what Laura Mercier is doing right now is a lot of her powders had talc in it, and a lot of brands are getting away from that simply because the potential for asbestos in talc. So even if these are products that Laura Mercier has had in their line, I'm fine with them reformulating for a talc-free formula. I don't know that they don't already have like a pressed powder. I have one, but it's more of like a finishing powder with luminosity. This is supposed to be an ultra blurring, finely milled, talc-free pressed powder, natural looking soft matte finish. And I really like the Laura Mercier finishing powder that I have. I also like the one that's like the highlighter. Oh, I really do like Laura Mercier powders. I don't dislike 
the original. It's just that it honestly wasn't as mattifying as some of my other mattifying powders, but I'm all for this. Non-drying, cake-free wear. It's also crease resistant, waterproof, and sweatproof, and has no flashback or white cast, $52. And it comes in three shades, translucent, honey, and medium deep. It's not bad. Now, let's move on. Catrice has dropped a Seeking Flowers collection. It's limited edition. It looks like it'll be available this month. I haven't heard anything else. Like, I don't know if this is launched. A lot of times Catrice stuff will go on Amazon's website. I haven't checked there, but it's really cute. It includes eyeshadow palette, cream to powder highlighters, uh, blush sticks, uh, lip stains, ooh, hydrating lip masks. So various different colors and the blush sticks look good. I think the thing that looks the best to me is honestly like this lip mask. This lip mask looks delightful. The eyeshadow palettes don't look bad. This is like an interesting collection from Catrice. I honestly might not have pegged it to be Catrice. Catrice has done collaborations and limited edition collections in the past, but this looks more like Kiko Milano or something else. I don't know, it, it just looks really cute. Let's read some of these comments. Wait, no one complaining about the eyeshadow palette not having separate pans and simple shades? Shocking. Uh, I wish they would go back to Ulta. I love to see them in person. Looking little too close to Laneige sleeping mat. Too close, too close. Well, it's supposed to have two O's. Oh my God, the designer of this limited edition must be genius. Maybe we'll get it in the UK. The Orange Dreamsicle Blush Stick, yes. Yeah, I think like it's kind of all over the place. I mean, there's not a ton of comments here, but it really is just a darling little collection. And these lip oils and lip masks look really good, but uh, I probably won't get anything. Like the only time I would get something like this, usually go out of my way for like a limited edition collection, is if one particular product really stood out to me and I had to have it, or I was gonna review the whole collection. And I'm probably going to do either, so. We move on. This is already dropped, you guys, and I don't even know if it's still available because sometimes these collections and collaborations sell out pretty fast, but it is a new collab from Kiss X Glam Light. It includes the palette, the Lick It Up Lip Kit, <laughs> Mascara Duo, Kiss Army Mirror, Black and White Bases. Okay, interesting. Uh, makeup bag, PR boxes, $120 or you can get the full collection for 99 minus the PR box. It came out March 15th, so it's already out. Again, don't know if this will stay out, but the color story here looks, I mean, it's like a basically a rainbow palette. The only thing you're missing here is like yellows and oranges. So it's, it's really cool. Aside from like black and red, you know, I don't know what other colors they could have thrown in that would have been kiss themed. I do, why though? Why are we doing a kiss themed? collection though, you know? Cause we just wanna collab with everybody, basically. That's what this is. Just let's collab with everyone. Let's just go down the alphabetical list. We'll just start with A, now they're on K. Let's just keep going. I'm sure there are KISS fans and some of this stuff is really cute. It's just like, where did they get the idea? Like at what point were they like, you guys, KISS is so hot right now. We need to do a collab with KISS. Cause you could have made, you could have made this like, you know, a collab with you too. And the color story could have been exactly the same. And would we say anything? I mean, I don't even know. I mean, that's just my thought. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, I actually really enjoyed this and thought about getting this. Sol de Janeiro is coming out with a summer skincare line. It is all SPF 50 and it's in the Sherosa 87 fragrance. I think I have the Sherosa 62. I don't think I've tried the 87. It's enriched with coconut water, Patanga extract, Patanga, um, Pongamia. You guys, if you watch these videos and you know, some of this stuff just has me laughing. I don't know how to pronounce this or what these things are. Um, niacinamide, and it comes with a spray, a lotion, and an oil available on the 27th. It's not quite the 27th, that's two days from now. As I'm filming this, it's Monday. So by the time I get this up, it'll probably be launching same day. I do like the scents of Sol de Janeiro, so I am not mad. Sun care with the nice, lovely scent to it at all 
and I like a lot of their products. So even the deodorant was pretty good. It was just that it literally had a severe white cast and I couldn't wear it. Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a beautiful skin island glow. It's easy tanning drops coming soon. Doesn't say when and I don't think it's launched yet. This looks like oil. I have talked about people coming out with bronzing drops. I don't think that's this. I think it's like actual tanning drops. So maybe that's the reason it just looks like straight oil colored. Fine. Not for me. ColourPop has revealed that they're doing a collaboration with Pokemon. It's coming soon on their website and retailers. That was March 14th. I haven't heard anything else, so I don't know. It says, if I don't see a Pokeball half blush, half highlighter compact, I will lose it. If they don't use the original Pokemon, I'm going to be so sad. They're the least deserving brand for this, so I'm sorry every collab in the past five years has been a flop. Oh no. Sorry, ColourPop. It's like everything feels so bland now. Low effort and no research really done on the collab. Exactly. I'm expecting the same boring neutrals we've gotten from every other collab with non-coordinating Pokemon names. Maybe a red plush because Pikachu had red cheeks and a gold highlighter. It'll still sell out though, like always, because people don't hold them to any sort of standard for some reason. Yeah, people are pretty upset that... <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to laugh at this. People are pretty upset that ColourPop got this because there's probably a lot of people out there that were really into Pokemon. And someone even said, oh no, this is going to be worse than the Twilight release. I wanna see what the replies were to this. By worse, I mean the products will sell out in second seconds. Oh, okay, Pokemon is huge. I read that as like the Twilight release was terrible. You guys, Half of my shades in my palette, in the Twilight palette, in the eyeshadow palette, were freaking hard panned by the time it got to me. The lip oils that were shaded were clear when they got to my lips. The body oil was like separating. Every time I set it on the table, take five minutes and the whole thing would separate. It was like grease. It didn't sink into your skin. It was not good quality. The whole collection to me was absolute trash. I have not been liking ColourPop's releases recently. Their blushes that were in the compacts, the cream blushes, all those shit just fell out. There was like no glue on them whatsoever. And literally I'd hold it up and it was like bloop. Then the shit was starting to change colors and they immediately smelled on me. I'm sorry, but I think ColourPop's quality has gone foo down. I'm, I'm not interested at all. Next. Well, speaking of ColourPop, the next thing up is another eyeshadow palette. It's called the So Elemental Palette. Giving major cool girl energy, nine shades of blissful blues and serene sparkling silvers and matte metallic and pearlescent glitter finishes, 14 bucks. Will be available 20, March 21st at 10 a.m. Um, it's pretty, but like it basically has the same shades the Twilight one did. So how do you know they didn't just have like leftover shades from the Twilight palette that they decided to throw in this nine pan and call it new? I almost guarantee you that's what they did. Okay, that's I'm 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 not lying. I think that's what they did. <laughs> All right, let's read the comments. Dear ColourPop, please stop with this oversaturation nonsense where you drop products every week with no breathing time. Please, for the love of God, mix it up a bit. I feel like they have. I actually feel like they've slowed down quite a bit in their releases. I want to say in 2022, we were seeing stuff every single week. By the time people were reviewing their collections, another one was being released. Yeah, love the tones, but don't we own this already? No, no, we want to see what the Pokemon collection looks like, not this. <laughs> Isn't this just a smaller version of the Cloud9 palette? Yeah. I mean, this is just a cool, of course, it has three near identical shades pass. And ColourPop is still around. This looks dusty, sorry. You might build your brand up by dropping new things of good quality every single week. But the thing is, if you've oversaturated what you carry in your line before people can even like move on from something, like we still have ColourPop palettes in our collection. So we have things to draw against. You've lost relativity. Like it's gone. You're just giving the same thing. You have now oversaturated your own market, which is <laughs> stupid. So I don't know. I feel like ColourPop's definitely gonna suffer in 2024. Pokemon collection actually might help them. I just, I don't know that it's, it's gonna get good reviews. I think it'll be mostly for the 
packaging aspect of it, the fact that it is Pokemon. And I want to even mention, I think that's probably why they did the Twilight too, just because both of those in terms of franchises and popularity were extremely popular. And so they thought, oh, we better do something that's like up there, up there, you know, like not kiss, but let's do Pokemon. Let's do Twilight because those were multi-million dollar franchises. I don't, I don't know what you call Pokemon necessarily. I mean, I suppose it's like a franchise, right? With all the different forms of media that they have. All right, let's move on. So it looks like it is available now, the new Shape Tape Glow Blush Bar from Tarte. It's a baked blush trio for an instant cheek lift effect, radiant pigments, blah, 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 it's $49. There's the Rosy Bar and the Berry Bar. Okay. Mm so one for lighter complexions, one for deeper complexions. It's actually not bad shade. You get one for lighter skin tone and one for a deeper skin tone and two blushes and one highlighter. It's not bad. These are pretty and I bet they're gonna be a nice baked formula. No, it's just not for me. I don't look at this and go, this is what's missing in my collection. It doesn't like draw me in. I feel like what's carrying Tarte at the current moment is all the lip products that they keep dropping. But what they're doing is like creating a different finish in those Maracuja juicy lips because they got so popular when they dropped the original. Their most recent one being the vinyl one, which I honestly didn't mind. I got one shade and I had good luck in it. I just don't think they can carry that much longer because people are gonna say the same thing that they did about Shape Tape. When they started naming every freaking thing Shape Tape, this is just an addition to their Shape Tape line now. It's the Shape Tape Glow Blush Bar. Like, don't, what, just take out the Shape Tape. Let's move on. Stila is coming out with a liquid whipped sheer face enhancer, instantly boosting gradients for dewy, glowy, hydrated skin. It's $29.83, which is $29.82, which is weird. Three different shades. This is again, a liquid luminizer that I feel like a lot of companies have put out and I am totally tired of liquid luminizers at this point. So this is a no for me. And I think Stila honestly needs a comeback. I don't even know who owns Stila anymore at this point. It does have good ingredients in, in it though. Flower extract, squalene, aloe, coconut waters to help pr protect and promote healthy looking skin. It kind of looks like a thicker cream though. Like they wouldn't mesh with the foundation well, you know, so something you'd have to like put on top of your face. And I just, I have enough of those. This is not what I think Stila needed right now. So let's move on from that. We have to talk about this. Nicki Minaj is coming out with her own press on nail brands, Pink Friday. Uh, you can choose the length, width, different colors and styles. Stiletto, square, coffin, almond. They retail for $19.99 to $44.99 each. The nails are $19.99 and $44.99 for the kit, which includes press on nails, nail glue for up to two weeks of wear, adhesive tabs, cuticle stick, alcohol prep bag. I mean, basically what you would get in press on nail kit. Some of the styles, I mean, they're so numerous here, you guys. I mean, there's just too many to call out. Um, I did go and like check this out on the website just to see like what this was about. I don't think it's like bad that like a celebrity is coming out with this and not another freaking makeup line called Pink Friday. Okay, let's read the comments. This makes sense, very fitting for her. Finally, a business that actually makes sense for a celebrity. Okay, kind of what I said. I'm glad she went into nails. She's always loved having extravagant nails and makeup is something that she barely tolerates when she's not making an appearance. Very on brand. Oh, people are yelling at each other. That's healthy. <laughs> Reading some of these comments, you guys. Every time I talk about other people making comments on people's videos, usually my videos get some sort of dislikes. And I, I happen to think it's because they don't like when other people voice opinions about you should just keep negativity out of social media. I mean, you should just keep it out of your life in general. And that's not cliche at all. That's an absolute waste of time. If you think about your life in terms of the limited amount that you have on this earth and the very little amount of things that you're actually in control of, wasting your time going after somebody on social media is a useless form of your own entertainment. It serves no purpose whatsoever. Attacking each other, that's where I draw the line. STFU, just STFU. You're probably all too old to be acting like this anyway. Someone else says, it's giving Shein, so you guys are still supporting her, huh? Yes, now stay mad, skinwalker. What, what does that even mean? Nobody's supporting you, I see all the photos. I can't even crack 100 followers. You see, 
That's the kind of stupid shit I'm talking about. I gotta move on from that. That's just negative energy I don't need. Let's go on. All right, Louis Vuitton is coming out with limited edition packaging in a gorgeous nude color for the Tint Fetiche La, I'm gonna give up right there, face powder and cushion foundation. It looks like it's coming soon. I wanna say I probably saw this on their website already. Um, I really did like the liquid foundation. They already did have a cushion foundation, but I don't know if they had uh, the face powder yet. I mean, it's just limited edition packaging, so I don't know if either of these products are new. But like I said, I, I do feel like I saw this limited edition packaging on their website already. All right, let's move on. Mascara from Kylie Cosmetics. It's called the Wisp Lash Mascara Black. Coming soon. I feel like I saw this on Ulta already. So I feel like this is already dropped. It's supposed to lengthen lift and fan give you fanned out effect it's clean and vegan weightless uh doesn't clump offers 24 hours of length and curl without flaking or smudging waterproof matte black it's like simplistic packaging but the thing with kylie is i feel like she cannot find her aesthetic every single thing that comes out looks different to me and i get the impression that it's done in a vacuum you need to find your aesthetic you used to have an aesthetic and now i feel like you don't know what that is and you're searching for it i'm not saying that her products are of bad quality or that they're not dissimilar to what a lot of other brands are putting out but yeah i think it's missing the baseline for an aesthetic a look to the brand overall that when we see something we go oh that's kylie and nothing is drawing me in except the perfume because of the notes i did talk about this you guys i think one of my new makeup releases videos where i was like i i'm not buying that i don't buy anything from kylie i did pick it up i did i did because i'm getting more into perfumes and when i was reading the notes of that i was like this sounds like right up my alley anyway it's gonna go into speed reviews i've been testing it for a couple of weeks now and I'll let you guys know what I think about it. But anyway, the point is, I don't think the products are necessarily bad. I think reformulating in the way that she did to make everything like clean or whatever was great. I personally think we're just missing like an aesthetic, like a baseline here. Uh, so that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. All right, this I talked about so many freaking times because we were getting teased with it. It was the release from Nomad Cosmetics. It was their St. Patty's Day release of the Ireland is it just Ireland? Ireland Wild Atlantic Way palette. And it's got uh, lots of greens and it looks like it's already out. Looks like a great green palette. I just, I don't need that at all. So I'm not gonna get it. The one that I really want was the Halloween one and I feel like it's sold out on their website. That's the one I want, the Ghost Town one. I want that one. I want that to be the first Nomad palette that I try. All right, we've got some new stuff from Too Faced, more new stuff from Too Faced, I guess. The new Hangover Pillow Balm Ultra Hydrating Lip Balm, 26 bucks, three shades. And then the Lady Bold Cream Lipstick, $29, I don't know, eight shades, nine shades, something like that. And then the Killer Liner 36 Hour Waterproof Gel Eyeliner Pencil in two more shades. I don't think the pencil is new. I think the, if I'm remembering their line correctly, the Pillow Talk Balm in this like shimmer finish is new. I don't think they've had the shimmer before. Anyway, they look pretty good. I'm into a shimmery gloss, but I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Too Faced just doesn't like draw me in. The Killer Liner though, the one that's like kind of shimmery, which is a metallic burgundy, a rich metallic burgundy, looks really good. I actually might get that. I don't know. That one looks different and unique. And then Lunar Beauty has just dropped the Mushroom Collection. It includes an eyeshadow palette, a highlighting palette, a lip glosses in three different shades. And it's already released March 22nd at 10 p.m. on his website. The eyeshadow palette actually looks really cute, you guys. It really, really does. It's very similar in the layout that he's done in the past, which is mattes on the top and the shimmers in the middle, which I don't mind. He's got like a bluish looking icy shimmer and a purple one, even like kind of a greenish tone here. And I don't have any of those colored shimmers in his formula. Do I just have one palette or do I have two of his? I don't know. I might have two. I might just have one. Who knows anymore? I don't even know anymore. I just, I don't see myself getting this. I still have a bunch of his glosses, which I really do like. I am so oversaturated with indie brand eyeshadows at the current moment that I don't need to be picking up anymore. But we're diving right into the comments section. Someone said, beautiful palette. I wish it was from a different brand. I just can't purchase from someone who continually, oh, who continues to blindly support JC. 
Who's JC? James Charles? Okay. Lunar Beauty has my favorite lip formula ever too. And then someone wrote, to whomever left the witty then don't buy it comment, thank you for giving me less faith in humanity. JC has admitted to, okay, we're not getting into all that. I didn't know that he openly supported James Charles. I had no idea. Get out of this. Someone said, my God, Trend Mood's comment sections are always where the most miserable people hang out apparently. What a nightmare. A lot of people actually are saying like, it's a strong pass since he still hangs out with James Charles. Some people are saying it reminds them of the Raw Beauty Christie palette. There's a lot of people that do not like the fact that he supports James Charles. I didn't know he did. So I don't know, let's not get into that. Anyway, RMS Beauty dropped the Hydro Powder Bronzer, $44.98 in one, two, three, four different shades. You guys, this is in my cart. I just haven't pulled the trigger. I really, really want this. It's just like 45 bucks for a bronzer. Dang, I don't know, RMS, slow down with all that. It's beautiful, it's nice. The lightest shade looks like a reddish undertone. It has a gel to powder bronzer. Um, it is still in the refillable style compacts. It looks really good. Oh, I love her stuff because it all's like got the Buriti, I think I'm saying that right, oils in it. So it's like super smooth, but gel to powder sounds fabulous. I love her blushes. I'm just talking myself into it. I, I definitely need to get this. I'm, 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 I'm gonna get it, okay. ColourPop just added to their So Juicy family, plumping lip products that look like they're trying to do what Tarte is doing, I guess. Basically in that same style packaging, just a year too late. Okay, that's fine. I'm not interested. Let's move on. Okay, we've got some more liquid blushes that I know are already out. These are from Give Beauty. It's the Dewy Plump Collagen Boosting Cheek Tints. They're $26 and they come in six different shades. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. I'm just not. I'm not mad at it. And I like Gwen. I do. I named my dog after Gwen Stefani. I was so obsessed with No Doubt when I was a kid that I, I named my dog Gwen. A lot of people don't know that I named my dog after Gwen, but I did. And I really like her. Honestly, I like her as a person. I actually think that she's really sweet. So I don't give a shit about the rest. As long as you're like a nice, sweet, not harmful person, everything else can fuck off. Okay, everything that has to do with, it's boring, it's not innovative. I've always thought she was kind of an incredible human being. I've seen her perform live many times when I was younger. I like her and that's all there is to it. So I think these are cute and I definitely wanna give these a shot. This has also come out, this is the com new complexion and lip products from Lisa Eldridge. Eldridge. So she's got the Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint for $49. I wonder if this even stands up like just like her foundation, it's like the egg shape. I mean, she's got an aesthetic, you know? Sculpt and Shade Lip Pencil, 28 bucks. I can't even tell how many shades. It looks like four neutrals, three cool, three warm. Okay, oh, there you go. The Skin Enhancing Tint, if I didn't say this already, retails for $49, it comes in only 18 shades. It's supposed to be an ultra lightweight texture that delivers a burst of hydration. So I think it's gonna be more light coverage, not a lot of shades, but the shade range looks really good. And if it's super light, it's not really gonna matter a whole ton. I thought about getting this. I just, I know me. I'm not into the light, super light coverage. If I am, I've already got that. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. So no, not for me. And then Dior is coming out with two new shades of the Rosy Glow blush in pink lilac and poppy coral coming soon on their website and retailers. It does uh, retail for the same that the other blushes retail for $40 for zero ounces. I'm just kidding. I'm just not an overly big fan of this formula. It's all right. It's very buildable, but it's like boring matte formula oh, for me. My God. Oh. You do your oh, okay. Calm down. So Trend Mood actually put the side-by-side -side images of the pink lilac up against the 001 pink and then this poppy coral next to the 004 coral. I, I don't see a huge difference here. Like what? What? They're just like brighter versions of what already exists. So are they replacing the ones that were there? I, I don't know. That's a no for me. But this kind of got me interested. There is three new colors of the Dior lip oils and I've never tried a Dior lip oil, believe it or not. I've tried hundreds of lip oils at this point and I have not tried a Dior lip oil, but these three new shades look 
pretty good, like super high shine. This bronzed one though, this bronze shade, I'll throw it up for you guys, looks delicious. They also are coming out with new shades in the Addict Lip Maximizer. It also looks like maybe three different shades in that as well. Yeah, so it's coming out as like a set to the addition of shades. It's the pinky poppy coral, the lilac, and then this bronze glow. So they're corresponding blushes with these new additions of the lip balm, I guess, lip maximizer, and then the lip oils. I don't know, the lip oils look good, but I, I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. And then Estee Lauder is coming out with a limited edition. I'm sorry, I ran straight to the comments. Limited edition eyeshadow palette. It's actually a collection, but it looks like just an eyeshadow palette and a lipstick. So, I mean, yeah. Anyway, the eyeshadow palette is called Shutting Pew Qua. Pure color dare to express eyeshadow palette is $54. And then the color matte lipstick is $37.50. Looks like puzzle pieces is like originally what I thought. This bullet looks amazing, but it is only available, it looks like, at Selfridges, which I do not like have an account with Selfridges and I have gone there several times thinking I wanted to buy something and just refuse to set up an account because I feel like you have to pay for it or something. I I'm not even sure, but I'm not going there. Someone says, I thought it was wet and wild. That's what had me laughing. Uh, someone said, me too. <laughs> it does look like puzzle pieces. I thought this was Lisa Frank for a moment. This feels chaotic to me. Is this where palettes are going? This is just nonsense, Some someone said. It says, this is very beautiful and I love that such a classic brand is coming out with beautiful different packaging. I will probably pick this up. As other people said, this is actually an interesting release. I've got like one Estee Lauder lipstick in my collection and that's it. I wanna say I decluttered my Estee Lauder foundation like some time ago, just cause it was getting on the old side. But aside from that, like what else do I have from Estee Lauder? Nothing. I don't care for palettes like this either. So no, it's a no for me. And then Gisu is coming out with three new shades of their lip oil, which we did talk about, but this is coming out on the 28th. So three more days. It will be available on Sephora's website. Two tinted lip oils plus one shimmer. So you're gonna have watermelon sugar, which is the clear pink shimmer. And then the other two which are just clear shaded mango passion punch and strawberry sorbet you guys the swatches on these are actually like really cool they're like enticing like they draw me in i might get the shimmery one oh, i might not it might happen and then isa maya beauty is coming out with new packaging lips sheer metallic balm i have the original launch the very original launch and it only came i want to say in chrome packaging but she's dropped several shades since then, but this one looks like it's a new shade. Oh, and new packaging. So it's a metallic finish. You guys look at this color. These were already super intensely pigmented. They were rich and creamy, but they were like opaque. This is now five more dollars than it was when I bought it. It's $95. The shade is Chalice Sunburnt Gold High Sparkle Sheer Bronze Shimmer melting texture for supreme nourishment and it's in gold packaging i mean if she's still launching these because she's come out with several shades since the original release it means that people are buying them otherwise where would she get the idea or the money to keep putting these out here i've already had my nice laugh about these they're actually really good quality and they're sturdy as hell okay you could knock somebody out like just hold the balls between your fingers and then like I mean, really, just knock the tip right on your husband's head if he's getting out of line. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but really, these are weighted. These must cost a decent amount of money for the magnetic closure, for the weights that are genuinely kind of in the ball sack. They're not cheap at all, okay? They're like full on steel, so. And then Rode is giving us new blush sticks almost ready to drop them coming soon on their website. I mean, you don't really see much other than like what she kind of posts on her Instagram of her like tapping it on, but like looking at the camera, like, oh, look at, look at me. I'm just not at all interested in trying the brand. So that's, I guess that's all we'll say there. And then Made by Mitchell is coming out with Bronze Pods Domed Bronzers. The Curve Case Collective XL Cream Blusher Palette, 78 bucks. You guys, if you want every shade of blush, like right here. And also these bronzer shades look really good. The range here is amazing, like 10 shades, 10 shades in this line. And it looks like a silky smooth formula. I'm actually quite tempted to pick up one of the bronzers, um, but not 
the blush palette. The palette looks amazing, but some of these do look like repeat shades. Not terrible pricing, I guess, you know, 78 bucks for like 9,000, that's 24 blush shades. Anyway, it's definitely a lot. If you're like a makeup artist, this might be something that's good for you, um, but just not for me. It's kind of interesting too, to see like a 10 shade bronzer launch in individual compacts and also like the cream blush that looks like it may be for makeup artists kind of dropping at the same time. So I don't, I don't know, that's just kind of my thought, but maybe there's more behind it. And then one size is collabing with Wicked to get a face palette, spotlight, highlighter, glitter setting spray, off the handle complexion brush. It's coming soon on their website and retailer. I cannot see the palette yet, but maybe if I go up further, it'll be there. None of this looks appealing to me, none of it. So I'm gonna pass. This does look appealing though. Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder in pink from Pat McGrath. It is 34 bucks, available April 1st online and at Sephora. And I've already seen it like on Sephora's website. I mean, not available yet to, to buy, but it's there. Her under eye powder has been talked about by a lot of people and I've definitely wanted to try it. It's very smoothing, blah, 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 blah. But this is pink and I feel like I've actually been liking pink powders lately. I didn't think I cared either way, um, but I actually do really like it. Okay, so now we can see the eyeshadow palette from one size and the highlighter. I couldn't see it in the original image. April 2nd, it'll be available. I don't even understand this color story. I don't understand this palette layout. You guys tell me your thoughts. I'm not interested. I am interested in this though. New Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blush from Rare Beauty coming in. Five different shades will be available this month. Don't know the exact date yet. We've got comments, you guys. Why couldn't they be matte? Someone else said they're super pretty, but her blushes are way too pigmented. I also prefer matte versus all the sparkle. Someone said, so the highlighter is just in different shades. Y'all not seeing the vision in the comments. You use this on top of a matte blush as your highlighter and it gives you the most perfect glow. No thanks. Someone said, okay, rodents. <laughs> Just the drama here. I hope I don't break these giving MAC extra dimension blush. Like, come on, this is ridiculous. I mean, we're all going after this comment section because there's gonna be so much hype around these. Like, give them a chance. The highlighters are great. I'm sorry if yours broke. I have two, not broken, not broken, not even shipped, nothing. So it might be a little bit about the actual product, you know, that it's just kind of like loosely poured. I think they're baked, right? I mean, if not, then they're just pressed on there. But anyway, or if I'm just lighter on my makeup than others, but I'm into a glowy product and that should be okay. You wanna give me glowy? Cool, the people who like glowy will buy it and the rest of them won't. Saying, oh, where's the matte is like, what's the point in that? What is the point in that? Doesn't she have matte liquid blushes? Or maybe that's next, okay? So just be patient. All right, let's move on. Let's see, do we have any more dates on these? Oh, March 28th, March 28th, now we do. I want all of them. So there. Let's move on to ABH, Serum Boosted Skin Tint. Wow, ABH has not come out with a complexion product in a while. March 28, it will be available. Undercover makeup with eight skin loving ingredients for a natural finish and serious care. Solid Serum Boosted Skin Tint. Oh right, sheer delight coverage. This could be like a bronzer, you know, for me. Like I could see myself like maybe using one of these shades as like a bronzer, but I am not at all interested in a sheer skin tint at the current moment. It doesn't say how much these are gonna cost though, not on this particular post. So I can't help you with that, but it will be out in three days and I'm sure it will be on both Sephora and Ulta's website. There's actually only a couple more that I personally wanna talk about. So I'm gonna head over to Makeup On Your Radar's page and talk about just a couple more things. I am dying for these to come out and I don't know like the date. It doesn't like say yet, but these are the Buxom Cosmetics Plump Shot Collagen Peptide Advanced Plumping Blushes. So they are cream blushes. I'm totally interested in this. They're 28 bucks a piece. I love the Buxom Primer Infused Blushes to this day. I still have not decluttered them. I still keep them around. I really like them. I like the shade range and yes, I'm okay with Buxom coming out with more cream blushes. I, I don't feel oversaturated at all. And it's not like a terrible price 
point at all. So anyway, I might get like one, at least one shade in this. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was Unearthly Cosmetics is coming out with kind of a new collection, I think. It's available for pre-order on March 4th. Estimated ship date is between March 18th and the 26th. It's the Spring Magic Palette, which retails for 78. The Blush Palette, 32. The Liquid Highlighter, 15. And there's two shades of that. And then the Ghoul Glaze Lip Gloss in one shade. It is $14, the so whole bundle is $138. I would like to see Unearthly Cosmetics like do well, you know, because it's a small indie brand. The eyeshadow palette actually looks really good. It's got like the burgundies, neutrals, greens, a little bit of blues. Like it's just my kind of color story. Someone did say what's going on with her prices. They used to be semi-affordable and now they're like Ensley Rain high crazy. The blush palette is 32 makes sense, but I'm just not seeing the special shades in the eyeshadow palette to justify the $80 price tag. 78, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like this, but they're definitely talking about 78 bucks. I mean, that's high, I think, for this particular eyeshadow. I mean, it doesn't say in this description, like if any of these are like special shades and more expensive to formulate. So that's one consideration there but it definitely is a pretty high price point. Actually, it might stop me from picking up the palette because even though I love the color story and I do like the Unearthly Cosmetics formula, I still feel like I have those shades. And so, you know, if it was like a 54 or $60 palette, I might think about getting it. I just, I don't know. The last one I wanna talk about just cause it's hilarious. The promo photos here, <laughs> I just bet you it's gonna be so unrelated to like what we actually get. So Beauty Bay or by Beauty Bay is coming out with something. A tasty treat is coming your way. Any guesses? It's kind of disgusting. It's eye catching, but it's gross. It almost makes you want to go huh? <laughs> just a little bit like that first one. Huh? Okay. Oh, an update to the beauty balm from ABH. It's available 328. If I didn't say that already, don't forget the Sephora savings event is coming up starting on 4.5 and going to 4.15. That is all I had for today, you guys. Not as funny stuff as normal, but ton of new releases. It even gives me like a little bit of a chance to go in there and kind of see what's going on. I do like the fact that not as many products here are interesting me as like some other videos that I have done, but I'd still love to hear in the comments below what you guys are interested in picking up or even what you're interested in seeing me review on my channel. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Wherever you are, whatever time you are, I am out of here and I hope to catch y'all in my next video. Bye guys.